Now we're going to look at the definition of the cosine. The definition of the cosine will relate the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So again, for example, let's say we have a triangle. Here's an angle defined between these two lines, the, and this is the adjacent side to the angle. This is the opposite side to the angle because it's away from the angle, and this is a hypotenuse, and again, used in Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but of course, in order to use that uh, theory, we have to know at least two of the three sides. What if we only know one side and the angle? What do we do? Well, let's say that uh, theta is known, the angle is known, and we know what the length of the hypotenuse is. How do we find the adjacent side? And of course, we can say that if the angle is uh, zero degrees, when it looks like this, then the adjacent side will be equal to the hypotenuse, and then the ratio is equal to one. But if the angle is 30 degrees, then you can see that the adjacent side is a little bit shorter. And so now the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse is a little bit less than 1.866, or the square root of 3 over 2. If the angle is 45 degrees, then of course the, uh, then the sides B and, B and A are the same, and the ratio of A to C is the square root of 2 over 2, or 0.707. If the angle is 60 degrees, you can see that A becomes shorter and shorter and shorter. Now the ratio of A over C is only one half. And finally, when the angle becomes 90 degrees, then the ratio of A over C is equal to zero. Of course, we have a lot of other angles for which we're going to have different numbers for those ratios. But at least we just want to get a general feeling of how that works. Now, if we were to write that into a function, a relationship, so let's draw the relationship here. And let's say that this is the ratio of A over C, and this is the angle theta. And uh, let's say when theta is equal to 90 degrees, uh, then the ratio of A over C is zero, as we found over there. And when it's zero degrees, then the ratio became one. So it looks like the function, the relationship, kind of looks like this. In that particular relationship, that's called the cosine of the angle. So the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side A divided by C. And if I now want to find the value for A, I can then solve this equation for A. So A is equal to the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. And all I have to do is find the angle, then take the cosine of that angle, multiply it times the length of C, and I know what the side A is equal to. Of course, if the angle is one of these numbers, then it's fairly straightforward to figure out what it is. But what if the angle is something different? What if if theta is equal to, let's say, 62 degrees, and C is equal to 10 feet, then what would A be equal to, question mark? So for that, you're going to need a calculator or a table listing out the appropriate ratios for all the various angles of theta. Now, in older textbooks, you will still find those tables. In newer textbooks, they may not even bother with anymore because now everybody has one of those little handy calculators. So A is going to be equal to the C, the hypotenuse, is 10 feet times the cosine of theta, and theta is now going to be 62 degrees. Remember, the definition of the cosine is simply the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Now, you take your calculator, you punch in 62, then you punch the button cosine, and out pops a number. So we have A is equal to 10 feet, and the calculator automatically calculates the ratio of A over C uh, for an angle of 62 degrees, and it is 0 0.4695. And if you multiply that together, you get A is equal to 4.695 feet. And that's how you utilize the cosine function. So we use the sine function to figure out what the opposite side is in respect to the hypotenuse C. With the cosine function, you can figure out what the adjacent side is with respect to the hypotenuse C. And all you have to know is the angle between the hypotenuse and the adjacent side to figure that out. So the sine and the cosine are very handy functions, and that is how we utilize them. In the next videos, we'll start talking about some new functions like the tangent.